This is Sky News with Stephen Dixon. Very good morning. We're starting with the claims that the SNP leader Nicola Sturgeon told a French diplomat she would rather see David Cameron win the election instead of Ed Miliband. Ms Sturgeon has emphatically denied the allegations in this morning's Telegraph, which has published details of what it claims are an official memo of a meeting with the French ambassador in February. Well, in the last hour, the French Consular General in Edinburgh has spoken to our Scotland correspondent, James Matthews. Well, uh, the ambassador of France came to the United Kingdom and saw uh, both the um, uh, Secretary of State of Scotland, Mr. Carmichael, and uh, Nicholas Pogen, uh, uh, as is usual with both. They uh, discussed the political situation, which, 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 which is normal, but uh, at no stage uh, did anyone comment on, uh, uh, make any comment on their preference regarding the outcome of the elections. Were you present at the meeting between Ms. Sturgeon and the French ambassador? Yes, of course. And uh, did you tell a civil servant that Ms. Sturgeon had expressed a preference for David Cameron as ambassador? No, no. The report states that it was a conversation with you, between you and a civil servant, in which you said Ms. Sturgeon had a preference for Mr. Cameron as Prime Minister? I didn't say that. I did not. Does she have a preference for Mr. Cameron? This is up to her to say. How did that notion get into a memo from a civil servant? There is a, there is a, a piece of writing from a civil servant that says that you said she had a preference, Ms. Sturgeon had a preference for Mr. Cameron. How can that happen if she did not say it? Uh, 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 I don't know. I mean, uh, it seems that there, um, th well, my first-hand report uh, didn't say that. And uh, did anything in that you said to him include those sentiments? No. No, it doesn't. When you say your first-hand report, was there another one? Well, I... Uh, in broad terms, I uh, told the Scotland office uh, what the programme of Mrs. Behrman was uh, when she visited uh, Scotland at the end of February. I obviously did a report to Paris also. Because it's surprising. Uh, people would say hard, very hard to believe that a UK civil servant would produce a report with Ms. Sturgeon's sentiments about David Cameron and that not to be true. It was there casual chat perhaps on the matter no I don't recall but I on the first place uh, I can tell you that uh, no one made any co uh, any preference so I don't know where this comes from really did they discuss the su suitability of Ed Miliband as Prime Minister was that a subject of discussion no 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 it wasn't no is this embarrassing for for all concerned is it embarrassing for for you? Well, I don't believe so because, I mean, it's, uh, it's normal uh, that I would uh, um, report in broad, broad terms uh, the visit of, um, of Madame Berman uh, to Scotland. It was her first visit, her first official visit. Uh, so I think it's, uh, it, it's normal. And um, that's it. Was the meeting in English? Absolutely. Yes. Where, where, where might the confusion have come from, do you think? It, it, would, be, it would be normal and to, to discuss David Cameron, would it not? Well, it, has be, it is normal to discuss the, the, the political situation in broad terms, which is what, which is what happened, yes. But uh, I do not know where this comes from, because it is certainly not in my report that anyone made any preference, did give any preference? Might it have been in something you, you said casually on the phone? No, I don't recall that. Well, James, live in Edinburgh for us, I mean, you put every possible scenario to him, James. He kept saying, no, that just wasn't the case. And presumably the, the French have got no axe to grind here, no reason to, to deny something that did happen.
Uh, you wouldn't have thought so, Stephen. I mean, it was a, a Gallic shrug of the shoulders, wasn't it, from uh, Monsieur Coffini, to whom we're grateful for spending the, the time to try to clear things up. I mean, his denial echoes the denial out of the French embassy in London. Now, Mr. Coffini, he's the French consul general in Scotland, a diplomat based in Edinburgh. He was present at that meeting between Nicola Sturgeon and the French ambassador. And as you say, it's, he says, it's a mystery to him uh, where this story has come from. He said he had a report. He, he does have his own report of what was said. He said he wouldn't show it to me. Uh, but, uh, you know, any sentiments expressed regarding David Cameron, Cameron or Ed Miliband are not included in it. The story has to have come from somewhere, and somebody uh, somewhere in this saga has clearly uh, got it wrong. But I suppose, you know, it has rather brought this election campaign to light, hasn't it? It's a news story beyond tour buses and policies and... Uh, a lot of stuff that we've perhaps heard before, certainly north of the border. But for Nicola Sturgeon, I suppose it can be great. She has done well in this campaign so far, did very well, as we all know, at the leadership debate, and was riding high, really, on a, a tide of perhaps fresh support, stressing her socialist credentials and, you know, doing her, making her best efforts to try to bring uh, wavering Labour voters and perhaps MPs on board with the idea of cooperation with Labour. So there was a 24-hour period when the SNP were doing very well indeed. This story rather derails it for now. Her opponents are certainly trying their level best to make sure that does happen. Scottish Labour saying this is a, a, a devasta devastating blow for the SNP because in Scotland it's all about you know, who can keep the Tories out, really? The Conservative Party, something of a toxic brand up here. There's only one Tory MP. And, uh, you know, who can portray themselves as the party to lock out the Conservative Party at the, the next election? Then clearly there are points to be scored uh, there. I suppose in this story we may never get to the bottom of it. I think people who support Nicola Sturgeon will believe Nicola Sturgeon. People who don't will not. Will it affect voting patterns in Scotland come May the 7th? I suspect probably not, but it certainly has intensified this campaign, rather. And, um, you know, the word from inside the SNP, who are not happy at all at this, uh, at this story, they are saying, well, look, this is a, a case at best of Chinese whispers, at worst, the undermining of the office of First Minister of Scotland by the civil, servant, uh, the civil servants. So, you know, we see where it goes. It will blow over, I suppose. There are five weeks to go until this election, but uh, it's certainly a hot story at the moment, and who it damages most will depend how it plays out over the next 24, 48 hours. Oh, indeed. James, thank you. Let's look at everything else for you this morning with Jeanette. Thanks very much, Stephen.